Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories that are breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by Chief Congressional Correspondent Susan Ferriccio. Susan, there's been maybe a little bit of food fighting going on in Congress lately, a lot of infighting among different lawmakers, especially the most outspoken uh, members of each party have kind of been going at it a little bit. What, what's, what's sort of going on? Well, this week, they're, they're always fighting over something these days. Just right. the partisanship has really reached uh, levels that I've never seen before. But this week, of course, there has been a, a, an important deadline um, to fund the federal government. The, the Congress is just unable to pass regular spending bills, and it forces them into these short-term measures that they have to pass every few weeks. And every few weeks, it gives them another opportunity to fight with each other when they have to pass these bills again. And there's a deadline coming up. Of course, uh, the funding was to run out on December 3rd. And right. now Democrats and Republicans are fighting over the vaccine mandate. There are, there's a group of Republicans who don't think we should pass another government funding bill unless the Biden administration eliminates the vaccine mandate that he put in place a few weeks ago to try to force people to get the COVID shot and to combat this new threat, uh, the Omicron variant that is just now surfacing in various parts of the United States. That fight is probably gonna go on beyond today because there are many Republicans who say that the government shouldn't be interfering that way with personal health choices. So that's part of the fight. They're also still bickering over how to raise the borrowing limit that is also about to expire in December, not for a couple more weeks. No resolution there. And you really have a lack of cooperation at a pivotal time. The public has really taken a dim view of Congress lately. They always have, but in particular, when we reach these fiscal cliffs and these, right. these fights that everybody knows are going to eventually be resolved, but cause a lot of pain in the interim. The public sort of fed up with it all. And they particularly dislike the government shutdowns. And so what I sense from both parties, even though they're often in disagreement, neither party wants to be tagged with causing a government shutdown. Democrats will try to blame it on Republicans, and often they are successful in doing that. But this time they have a problem. They control government. It'll be harder to sell that to the public when they have the White House in both chambers of Congress under their control. So I sense from listening to the leaders today that they too are, you know, a little bit nervous about having this thing go past the December 3rd deadline. It's probably not going to go much longer past that, if at all. I think they may resolve this issue by allowing some votes that um, some of the conservative Republicans are seeking regarding the vaccine mandate. And I think what they would like to do, Republicans, is ultimately just show the public that Congress is not going to just accept a vaccine mandate from the president, that they want lawmakers to vote on whether or not there should actually be such a thing. And it's really interesting because polling shows the public has varying views about this. There certainly are some people who want a vaccine mandate because they think it'll make everybody safer, but there are a whole lot of people who don't like it. And it's caused a lot of lay, you know, un unexpected layoffs in the healthcare industry and uh, first responders, other critical and essential workers who have said, I'm not going to get the shot. So it's forced the public to weigh whether this thing is really a good idea or not. And now we have the Omicron variant entering the picture. We don't know how serious it is. And you have Biden talking about new, uh, potentially new restrictions to make sure this thing doesn't get out of control again in, in big cities, obviously. So it's, it's, it's still, it's a big issue. Here we are two years in really in Congress um, and it's now uh, forced Republicans and Democrats on opposite sides again with Democrats calling the Republicans anti-vaxxers and Republicans right. saying that the government is overreaching. It's a new and interesting debate and it's, it'll be interesting to watch where it goes and how far it goes. And Republicans have a history of both trying to use potential government shutdowns as leverage over Democratic administrations. Certainly, they, they tried to do that with the whole defund Obamacare gambit uh, when Barack Obama was in office, and also maybe to raise some symbolic issues on the, for the benefit of their constituents and voters. But sometimes it's really backfired on them. 
it has the polling has showed that the public tends to blame uh, Republicans, but it's not always Republicans instigating things or fully instigating things. The last and longest government shutdown we had lasted 35 days. And that was really a dispute between Democrats and President Trump over border wall funding. So Democrats who were in the minority wanted to say in, in this, even though the Republicans controlled the Congress and the White House and felt that they should get their way on border wall funding because that's what the election bore out, that people supported that. And Democrats resisted it. There was a standoff um, between the president who would not sign government funding unless Democrats would allow a bill like that to get to the Senate. They had filibuster power then in the minority. And looking at polling after that, Democrats did not come out looking too great after that one either. I think the, the public is really, you know, they've grown tired of it. And when Democrats are in control as they are right now, it, they do run the risk of the public just seeing this as another failure of the Biden administration. Like they couldn't get it done. They couldn't right. pass this legislation keep the government open. It's embarrassing. It hurts, you know, could have uh, impact the markets. It, it forces people to receive their paychecks late if they work for the federal government. You know, the parks might shut down. There could be immediate impact. And that Democrats make, it makes them nervous. So even though they are sort of saying casually that this is all going to fall on Republicans blame wise, uh, I don't think they fully have confidence in that. And that, I think that's a smart assumption on their part that the, the voters may, may in fact blame Democrats because Republicans aren't the ones in control right now. And Democrats, even though their majorities aren't very big, have had a lot of trouble getting legislation passed. And December is supposed to be the big month where maybe they finally pass the big spending bill that they wanna pass and that they keep the momentum going from having passed infrastructure gotten that signed into law, maybe they show they can do something. What do you think the prospects of that are? Well, I think that it all depends on a couple of moderates in the Senate who you and I talk about every week, and that's Joe Manchin right. of West Virginia and Kristen Sinema of Arizona. Sinema hasn't said much lately, but Manchin is now questioning a few key provisions that Democrats really want, a uh, four-week paid leave. That's a real biggie. Uh, Manchin wants that to be negotiated separately with the Republicans involved. That, that would be a tough sell for Democrats to accept, but his vote is critical. So yeah, I hate to say what he says goes, but you know, right. if he's not gonna vote for it, it's not gonna pass. So therefore he does have a lot of power right now. And Sinema hasn't said much at all. So it's not clear whether she'll support anything in the end, whether they can get this done by Christmas. Manchin appears to be in no hurry, but Democrats are now really upping the pressure on him to, to get on the bandwagon and support this thing and there's, of course, the fossil fuel issues. There's a methane fee in there that's probably going to raise gas prices, natural gas prices. I know Manchin's no big fan of that. There are all kinds of issues that could have to, you know, force Democrats to change this legislation in a way that's not going to make the liberals happy over in the House. And whatever the Senate changes and passes in the Senate, if they're actually able to do that, the House will then have to take that bill up again. So now you're looking at January, probably. It, it would be tough for them to get this entire thing done by Christmas. Now, will the Senate get it done by Christmas? It's possible they can. They're certainly aiming for that. They're, they're churning this thing through the parliamentarian's office to make sure it matches all the rules that they need in order to pass this without a Republican filibuster getting in the way. Once that's done, they're going to probably put it on the floor second week in December. They need to give at least that amount of time to try to get it over the finish line by, by this Christmas deadline that the majority leader Chuck Schumer is talking about. I just don't know if they're, they're gonna accomplish that at this point. Again, it all depends on Manchin and Cinema and the parliamentarian. And then how quickly can they get him to go along, if at all, with this? And that's a huge question mark. Reporters pepper him with those questions every single day. He has mm -hmm. not given the signal about what he's gonna do. And they mostly were able to get past this in the House. You know, the moderates mostly voted the way they were supposed to after sort of threatening that maybe if they didn't like the CBO score that they might not support it. Uh, liberals, with a handful of exceptions, mostly went along with uh, yeah. passing it after infrastructure out of order the, the way that they uh, originally had planned. But it might be a little bit tougher in the Senate where each individual player has a ton of leverage and there's not a single vote that they could spare. 
That's right. And in, in the house, they do tend to go along when they know that's all they're going to get. They, they see the this or nothing. And the Senate will do that too, which is why Manchin can probably get away with changing the bill successfully because Democrats know it's this or nothing. They have the green light. It may, it may be gone in uh, January, 2023. If Republicans regain control of the house, that means forget it. You're not gonna have an opportunity to do this again. And that forces them to accept things that otherwise they would think this bill is not big enough. It doesn't cover enough programs. That is true. And I think that's why Manchin has so much power. You saw this with Obamacare. I, I covered that very closely in the Senate. And there were moderates there who did change the bill because mm -hmm. the Senate required, it had a very slim slim ability to get 60 votes at the time because that's, that's what they had. And in order to pass it, and they didn't want to use reconciliation, which would have um, forced them to change the bill. They had to get the approval of all the moderates. And so they had a lot of impact on what was in the bill. That's what Manchin is right now to the Democrats. He's sort of the decider here, uh, as is Cinema, who I think is real, the, really the big mystery here. She, she had some problems with the uh, Medicare prescription drug negotiations. I don't know if that's fully worked out for her, or whether she's going to go along with everything else in the bill. There's concerns over raising taxes, what that will do to the economy. Um, and so Cinema needs to weigh in at some point, and she will. She will weigh in. It, there's some scenarios here. This thing may not pass by Christmas. Maybe it drags into January and then they just keep going. They keep trying to negotiate it. They're right. not gonna give up if it doesn't pass by Christmas, but that's what they would like to do. They wanna get it done, try to get it over the finish line. The Senate's the big hurdle. Whatever they pass in the Senate, the House, Pelosi, I have some confidence that she'll be able to get that thing, whatever it is through the House. She's done it before. Right. Then you, you've cleared the deck for things they want to pass in the new year that may reflect more how they are feeling about the midterm elections. Nobody wants to pass a tax increase or be dealing with this right ahead of the election, especially their moderate swing state Democrats in the House who are really concerned that this thing's going to drive up inflation. Um, and that is a big concern. So spending more money can drive up inflation, which is already high. Gas prices are high. People are worried about their, their energy bills as, as winter is approaching. And there's provisions in this bill that are gonna raise people's energy prices. So all this is a little bit politically dangerous for, for certain Democrats and for the, probably for the party at large, uh, just given what voters are concerned about. And I think the sooner they pass this, they feel the better off they are. Then they, what they wanna do is kind of do this blitz where they go out and they they sell this thing. They they make right. you know they go around the country and they say, look at the benefits that are here for you, um, right. and it'll be free free preschool, um, the extended childcare tax credit, money for caring for the elderly and disabled, expanded Obamacare subsidies, ways to make Americans feel like they're getting more money to help them out, and that's what the Democrats' game plan is. So they need they say they want to pass it first. And then go out and sell it and, right. and, and win, score some points that way. And uh, that's their plan. And again, the timing on it is really uncertain at this point, but I know their goal is Christmas. And, and that's what we're all watching for right now. What happens in the next couple of weeks? Democrats have a lot riding on this month then because they could either end up with the bulk of the Biden economic agenda passed or they can't even keep the government open. Right, and I do think they'll get the government open. I, my sense is that there, and I always say this, if there's a will, there's a way, even if they don't have the way yet, that I do get the sense from the leaders on both, in both parties that uh, they wanna get this done. So say in the Senate, you, no one can, they can't block it in the Senate, they can slow it down a couple of days uh, just because it forces the debate time to extend. Eventually the government's gonna open reopen. It may take a couple days, three days. I think that they're going to be okay on that. That's that I don't see. It's not going to be like last time where there's just an impasse that drags on and on and on as there was at the beginning of the Trump administration. In this instance, I think what's going to happen is there may, if at most, a short delay in passing the bill that won't really impact a lot of people and will be long forgotten. And so Democrats will be able to get over that hurdle pretty quickly, I think. But of course, they want to avoid the specter of, oh, look, now we can't get a government funding bill passed. What can we do exactly? Yeah. So obviously, you're right about that. They don't want, even on a short term, 
they don't want that uh, image uh, that they can't do anything or get anything done. They're quite sensitive to that. You could hear it in the leadership remarks today. Nobody wants that to happen. Um, they're not just coming out guns blazing saying, well, it's all going to be the Republicans fault. Let them do what they want. They're saying, no, 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 we're going to work it out. So everybody clearly has a stake in this in both parties to get this thing uh, over the finish line. But remember, it only gets them to February. <laughs> this just drags it out again. And then they have this December 15th deadline on the debt ceiling, which is equally ominous. Um, and they don't have an agreement with Republicans on that. So that's the next thing that Democrats have to figure out how to negotiate with the GOP. And that's the, the debt limit. That's, to me, that's gonna be uh, ugly, <laughs> trying to get that thing accomplished by mid-December while they're in the middle of also trying to convince Joe Manchin to pass this $1.75 trillion social welfare and green energy bill. So it's, it, December is gonna be really tricky for the party but interesting for all of us who are observing it uh, on the sidelines. So it'll be fun to watch. It's quite a Christmas wish list for the Democrats this year. <laughs> it really is. Thank really you, Susan. Thanks you a lot. You can read Susan and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.